Good afternoon, St. George and Southern Utah. This is Michael Harding. And this is Christina Harding. And we're here as part of On the Arts, the show that is dedicated to blowing the lid off of all these little artistic secrets that we have here in Southern Utah. We've got a lot going on, a lot of things to watch, a lot of things to listen to, a lot of things to look at, uh, a lot of things to experience. Um, And actually, right now, we wanted to start out by letting you know an experience that both Christina and I are having right now. Yes, we are heavily involved in the uh, rehearsals for Framed out at Kayenta, which will open next week on November 8th. And those are intense rehearsals. We just started a week ago, had to come in fully memorized, and... uh, Wow. wow. What, a, what late nights, but it's worth it. It's been a great experience so far. <laughs> We're tired, but yeah. It's been boot camp <laughs> yeah, for the professional boot camp theater. theater. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just a, it, it was actually a really interesting experience going in memorized. A lot of times with, uh, you know, rehearsals and such, you're mm-hmm. not required to come in me- yeah. memorized. And a lot of people, they want to come in and they want to... Um, they want to uh, feel the feel of mm-hmm. the show. They want to uh, get to know the other actors and such. And that's a luxury when mm-hmm. it comes down to it. Uh, a lot of theaters economically are shortening their mm-hmm. rehearsal processes. And uh, we had actually Rob Goodman, uh, the former artistic director of Milwaukee Repertory Theater, and also the creator of yeah. First Stage in Milwaukee, mm-hmm. a wonderful, wonderful training program yeah. for young actors. And uh He's got experience doing this stuff, and he asked us to come in off book, and we hit the ground wow, running. Yes, yes, our brains are fried, but it's been exhilarating. <laughs> but we've learned a lot, and it's been it's been a great experience out there. Yeah, we're excited to do the show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we actually have a young lady, uh, a former student mm-hmm. of yeah. Rob, as a matter of fact, Rachel. in Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rachel Schmeling Mm -hmm. uh, is in it. She's living in New York right now, uh, enjoying the openness and the vast land of Utah. She loves St. George so far, yes. She's been hiking around during the day, and and, and she's never been here before. So she's enjoying our community, and she's absolutely in love. And how wonderful to be brought Mm -hmm. out for an entire month. Uh, paid to rehearse at night, but you get the days to experience the beauty. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) she's very talented. It's been fun watching her work. Mm -hmm. And we also have Jake Thomas Mm -hmm. uh, in the cast. Jake Thomas, uh, I believe, one of the best young actors that we have in Southern Utah. Uh, He's part of the cast as well. They play a couple. And then we have uh, the older couple, if you will, the more mature couple. Well, older, mature, you know, experienced couple. guess who that is. (laughs) No, we're supposed to say experienced couple. Absolutely. Experienced. And that would be myself and... Yes, and, and me, yes. And, and, of course, the character that I play is nothing like me. Oh, right? not at all. Not, not at, at all. all. No. And, and actually, I'm happy to say not at all. <laughs> uh, well, one of the great things about being in the theater and being an actor is you mm-hmm. do get to explore sides of humanity mm-hmm. that perhaps you wouldn't in your everyday life. And yeah. I do have to say the character I play, uh, gentleman, gentleman, I use that term very loosely, mm-hmm. uh, by the name of Nick Da Silva, mm-hmm. is basically the equivalent of a mob boss when it comes down to it. <laughs> uh, not only is this funny because I have no idea what yeah. I'm doing as far as the world yeah. of crime, but also the fact that this guy is very, very good at business. I have to say that's mm-hmm. taking a lot of my acting skills to pretend I know what I'm doing. Oh, with not numbers. really. Oh, no, you discredit yourself. You're pretty good at business. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Monkey business. Monkey business is Uh, that. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. And, of course, you're playing a role, Joni. Joni, yes. And she wants to want to be artist. A want to be artist. She wants to be an artist, yes. And very, very left brain and very ambitious woman who wants to accomplish her dreams. And she has a pretty tough time doing it, but she's pretty clever in how she decides to handle it. <laughs> and I, I, I will tell you, we don't yeah. want to give away the story and such, yeah. but again, one of the great things about it's a new doing play. Great Place, mm-hmm. it's a new play. Yeah. The, all of these characters, any of the characters that we play or direct or um, or even just explore in any mm-hmm. way, yeah. they all are a little bit of ourselves. Yeah. And we really can see ourselves. And we are going to talk in just a little bit mm-hmm. about a title you may have heard <laughs> called Beauty and the Beast. Oh, tell us all um, this time. And this is, and Christina's. Uh, going to use her lovely voice and sing for us here. Yes, I love Um, Beauty and the Beast. But I will say, in order to segue into our guest here in the studio today, uh, and I actually was struck by how this particular show is relevant in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, Beauty and the Beast, of course, which is being directed right now by Kelly Olson, who's been on our show before. Yes. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kelly Olson, as a matter of fact. Dr. Kelly Olson, who makes our teeth beautiful. I was struck Mm -hmm. last night as we were going to rehearsal uh, and actually as we were pulling out of our driveway, I saw a lot of youngsters uh, walking Mm -hmm. around and they were in their costumes, of course. And they were just delighted. There was a little girl across the street and she had a princess (laughs) outfit on. Mm -hmm. And I walked out to the car and she just looked over at me 
and she was so proud, so yes. excited to be in this princess outfit. Mm -hmm. And she waved across the street, and I waved back, and she was just in heaven. And it got me thinking about how uh, one of the big family trips in America is to go to Disneyland or Disney mm -hmm. World. Yes. And how yes. wonderful that our kids get to be surrounded by these characters mm -hmm. that they've seen in the movies and uh, they've seen on cartoons, but here they are in real mm -hmm. life. And it truly is this magical experience. And uh, I'm actually being shown a picture right oh. now of Kelly Olson. And let's see, who are these oh. in the picture with you, Kelly? This is yesterday. When you speak of yesterday, Paul and Gwendolyn Dadage, who Gwendolyn oh, yeah. has a theater degree and and uh, does some costuming, and her kids are dressed up here as uh, Belle and the Beast. Oh, how the sweet! The two little ones there. So that's a <laughs> for those of you who can't see. It's a darling picture. Beautiful little kid. <laughs> and I will there say, Dr. Olson is holding it up oh, to the camera. Yes. And just as a reminder, you can check us out. Yes. You can see what this all looks like here on the show mm -hmm. uh, by checking out Radio St. George mm -hmm. on Facebook. That's Radio Space S T Space George. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do do a live stream of this. We also do a live stream on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You can find us. Yeah. And and if you're unable to watch right now or if you're unable to listen to the whole show and you would like to hear more, just go to Facebook. It is archived, yes. the entire always interview. There. You can always find us. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, going back, it was so wonderful to see all of these kids dressed up and mm -hmm. having such a great time. And it occurred to me, wouldn't it be great if we had a place here in St. George where these animated movies could come to what? life? What? And it occurred to me, a lot of the theaters around town are doing this in yes. theaters on Broadway and such. We had <laughs> Hunchback of Notre Dame yes. uh, very recently. <laughs> we have Little Mermaid, which I understand is going to be done at Tuacon again because mm -hmm. um, it was so yeah. popular. Yeah. Uh, and, Brigham's is doing the junior version. The junior? Oh, the absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think at Vista... Uh, uh, They're doing it as well right yeah. now. It's coming up. Little Mermaid. There's a lot of Little Mermaid happening out there. A lot of Little Mermaids out there. there. Yeah. Uh, and we also have the musicals like Newsies uh, mm -hmm. that are being done yeah. uh, uh, quite often and such. Mm -hmm. These Disney shows and the characters are coming to mm -hmm. life, which brings me to yes. a production yes. that is in the works right now, Beauty and the Beast, the stage version. And we're very happy to have with us the director of this uh, production, Dr. Kelly Olson. Woo! Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and let's see, we had you last time you were here, you were directing South Pacific. That's right. For yeah. Brigham's. Mm -hmm. And I was particularly impressed by the fact that you were talking about the relevance of the show today. Mm -hmm. um, right. And I think that's uh, something in all of theater, mm -hmm. whether it be Framed, the play that uh, Christine and I are doing, or Beauty and the Beast, or South mm -hmm. Pacific, or any of the pieces around here. They're all relevant because they have to do with people and mm -hmm. elements right. of Right. Well, I mean, how does uh, Beauty and the Beast start? A tale as old as time, yeah. right? Yeah. And so it's a story. It's... Uh, the more I've worked with it, it's what a great script. I mean, it's it's always nice when the script writer and the book gives you great material to work with, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You hear some of these lines and the way things are, are written and they're done so well. And it's got the comedy, it's got the villain, it's got the um, the love story, the, <laughs> the, the fight, the girl that is so beautiful to everyone but feels so insecure and odd and mm -hmm. all these things that we all deal with on a regular basis now and even though it's set in the 1700s mm -hmm. right so absolutely so relevant now in this yeah. time people can yeah. relate and especially for those little girls that are going to come to the show right. dressed in their bell Very outfits better be. right i'm expecting <laughs> that be yeah i hope there's a bunch i'm sure there will be yeah well, and it's then on the other side show. we've got all those little girls who want to be the little bells but what about those little boys who want to be the beast That's what right. about the little girls that want to be the beast absolutely uh -huh. or what about the girls who want to be gaston <laughs> <laughs> That's right. yes we all know a gaston in our life so yeah <laughs> well then they can be they can be chip too the because chip. i have right. a girl yeah. and a boy is chip oh fantastic so, yeah okay so this is a production that's going to be performed at the at the opera house Correct. the St. George Musical Theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a community play. So can you tell right. us about a little bit about when these auditions took place and some of the people that showed up at your auditions? What yeah, happened? that's that's um uh, a fun thing. In fact, I was right in the middle of performing Flowers for Algernon yeah. with mm -hmm. a couple of people here across from the yes. table that I know extremely we, well. We, yeah, yeah. And uh, so the only time since I was directing South Pacific and doing that that I had on my slate to do auditions was the Tuesday and Monday yes. of our run. Yeah. So that was what, around September 20th, 20th, 16th and 17th, I think. 
and uh, then did callbacks on the 22nd, and the first day of rehearsal was Monday the 25th of September, right after Flowers for Algernon ended. So, and any time you're directing a show, as you know, the you have a vision for what you want the show to be like, but until you cast the show, you don't know everything you can do. You know what you want to do, but you have to wait and see what your skill set, your talent level is. Yeah, I can imagine. Can you? Mm-hmm. What can you do with the with the show mm-hmm. based on who shows up to auditions, especially yeah. in a community theater setting where if you're hiring people, you can start searching. Go to New York, pull in this person here. Or, yeah. or go in and, and you have some of those luxuries where when people are volunteering with their time because they love theater, yeah. you hope that they're going to give up their time and you'll get a strong cast. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, I was doing a children's ensemble and you want a children's ensemble. So they have an opportunity to participate in the show that also encourages families to audition. So maybe you'll get some more adults coming that want to be part with their family ah, yes. and, uh, which is always fun yeah. for them to do a show together. And the interesting thing was when you have the kids there aren't a lot of kids shows now that, um, are being done because, the theaters have to have shows that they feel like will bring in revenue for the mm-hmm. companies, right? True. Mm-hmm. And so most of them have been done, like Annie and some of the others. <laughs> anyway, long story short, I only had about 20 kids audition, and we had 78 auditions, so that left me 58 adults. I mean, oh, talk about being no. excited. <laughs> I was I was giddy after auditions were over. That's you, a great turnout. Yeah, you wait. You wait mm-hmm. to hopefully have who's going to audition. I wasn't worried all about Belle, right? Mm-hmm. Because whoever Belle was, I knew that I'd have a whole bunch mm-hmm. of Bells audition for the show. How many Bells showed up for this audition? So I probably had, um, well, every girl was auditioning for Belle, uh-huh. right? Right, right. But <laughs> ones that said they would only be Belle or were hoping to be Belle. I mean, all of them were hoping to be Belle. But legitimately, there were probably 14, and I probably had 10 of them that said they would only play Belle. Oh. Okay? And obviously they have to be right for the part and who's playing the Beast and all the other things. And I was left with some wonderful choices. Uh, And so we've got, I double cast that. Oh, so you double cast Belle. Right. Uh So um, so we had, I wasn't worried about that at all. I knew Uh we'd have, and and that's exactly what happened. So what does that exactly mean for those who who don't normally go to theater? What does double casting mean? So depending on who auditions and the talent pool you have and conflicts that people have for the shows, uh, that means the same person, not the same person, the same role is played by two people. So every other performance. Oh, more opportunities is, for that person. Right. Uh-huh. So I've got two people. Uh-huh. I just can't decide because they're both so wonderful. <laughs> and so people yeah. ask me, well, who should I go see? And my answer is always, oh, you need yeah. to see both. It'll be two Because they both shows. bring such wonderful yeah. things. So mm-hmm. so they're, every other night we have different people, different um, bells mm-hmm. played by McKenna Hodge and Allison Ryan. And uh, so either night is double cast. So there's two people playing. Oh, it's not an fantastic. understudy. I have an understudy for The Beast. And that person will perform, I think, two shows of the 18 that we're doing. Oh, wow. But the double, they alternate mm-hmm. shows. Now, uh, regarding your Beast, uh, I was talking to you before about your mm-hmm. Beast. And this sounds like somebody that's new to our community. Right. Yeah. And I. Uh, Tyson may be here a little later to so, join yeah. us. Yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah. So uh, the casting process, you're hoping, okay, who am I gonna going to get for these mm-hmm. parts? And um, Don Clements is understudying the oh, role, who will mm-hmm. be fantastic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can't cast an understudy unless you're confident they can carry the show. Right. <laughs> right. And he can carry mm-hmm. the show. Uh-huh. And then Tyson, who shows up. And I've, you guys know I've done a lot of theater around town, right, with all the different theater companies <laughs> mm-hmm. and just love it and love just intertwining between the companies so I know most of the people. Yeah. So I have a good idea of who may show up for my auditions. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, this guy shows up, haven't seen him before, and uh, turns out he has a musical theater degree and he's had some experience in all kinds of different uh, performing arts. And he smokes, which... For him, his voice, it makes his voice a little deeper and raspier, so kind of oh, beasty sound. Beasty, <laughs> okay? yeah. So oh. it's one of those things where it's like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. And the more he starts talking and singing, uh, it's just like, this guy is the beast. Oh. And so uh, just one of those pleasant surprises. Mm-hmm. 
that uh, walks in the door, and it's just like, oh my gosh, we are going to have an amazing cast with whoever's playing the right. part. And he has training in combat, the stage combat, and professional wrestling, so we can make oh, some really wow. fun wolf scenes and fights with Gaston. These things that I just, I have in my mind it's going to be at this level. And then you raise the bar up and thought, this is we where it's turning more. out. We, we can, can do, do more, more because of the uh -huh. skill set That's that we cool. had audition. Same with the ensemble. Now, just wonderful. This is not a paid role. These are all volunteer. No, no, no. None of them. Yeah. And same with Gaston. This family moved here from Hawaii. And the, the man playing Gaston is Andy Young. He sounds like the Broadway track. Oh, wow. So when you listen... And and you listen to the Broadway track. It's like, was that him on the Broadway track? That's <laughs> we got so him to come sad. here to St. George. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. it just makes it. I, I mean, I was just having chills and just giddy about. Oh my gosh, this show's going to be so amazing! And right now, it's already looking so wonderful. I want to see the show. It's not done yet. It opens November 29th, but I, I want to sit down. To go I'm ready to sit down and watch house. it because I know how wonderful it's going to be. What a great holiday show, too, for the families and our Absolutely. community to go up to the Opera House and watch Beauty right. and the Beast with the family. That's right, a, exactly. Yeah. And we've already, had, we've already got one sold-out show, so this is a very well-known show. Um, I put in my director's note that Cinderella, I think, is the most common known fairy tale. And uh -huh. um, I've read that Beauty and the Beast is like the second most well-known one. So people will want to get their tickets yeah. early because I it's think we're going to sell out sell most out all of for them. the holidays. Yeah. That, great. Wow, that's great. Now, Kelly, you're not only do you, I know that you're involved in a lot of the theaters around here. I've always seen you in almost all, I think every one of them now. You've done a production and been involved in each of the community mm -hmm. theaters in our area here. You're also a dentist. You I also am. do that. And so I guess what my question is, is I think anybody listening would be like, well, wait a minute. How does he have the time, and why would he do that? You know, most people think, oh, you put in your hours at work, and you want to come home and just put your feet up, turn on Netflix, and kind of relax. And and uh, But I know you're not wired like that. <laughs> no, no, that's true. No, I've always been an active spirit. Mm -hmm. right? I've never been a homebody and, mm -hmm. and wanting to stay at home all the time. And so uh, I actually wanted to do acting for a living. I pursued that at first. Mm -hmm. I loved biology in school, too, and so I was taking some biology classes. But I started in uh, Salt Lake right after I got off my mission. I had an agent that I was going to work with, a pretty big agency from L.A., and uh, looked at uh, what was going to take to, to do the job. And the average pay I looked at was like 13000 a year. But, of course, we're all better than that. We're going to be the one making 400000 mm -hmm. or 500 or however much it is. And so, anyway, uh, when I talked with this agency seriously about some auditions mm -hmm. and they, they liked what I had to offer and, and uh, I really appreciated their candor and they said, look, um, knowing that I was from Utah and active in the church and things, they said, this needs to be your number one priority. It can't be, it's not your job. If you if you have an audition, if they won't let you off, you have to quit your job mm -hmm. because we have a reputation. You have to, it can't be your family and it can't be your church. Mm -hmm. This has to be your number one priority. Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing to make that kind of commitment, you may want to consider doing something else. And I met my wife. We weren't engaged or anything, but enough to know the direction I wanted my life to go. And I wasn't ready at that point mm -hmm. to make that my number one commitment. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, if I go this other direction and maybe be a dentist, then uh, <laughs> just a then dentist. then maybe I can do something later community-wise. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so that's when the shift changed for me as to what I really want to do, although this was my number one love and passion. Mm -hmm. So then I started the dental practice. We had two sets of twins. Oh, only and, two. Uh, only two. Only two sets of twins. And so five, <laughs> what, four years apart, four and a half, five years apart by the time they were born. And so it took 10 years mm -hmm. to recover from all of that and setting mm -hmm. up the practice. And then my girls were old enough to start enjoying theater themselves. To where the door opened that, hey, you know, I, I just want to try and get back into it yeah. and, and see, do I still have that desire? And as soon as you get on stage once, you know whether or not you do. And yeah. it's, it was there. Yeah. It was back in the blood. And, and my girls loved it and started getting involved there. And, and then uh, 
then after I did the first show, my wife said, oh, well, you're going to be gone all the time. And, and what about this? And what about that? I Look, I just want to audition. I don't even know if I'll get a part. <laughs> and I got a lead in the first play mm-hmm. that I did with the Space Between Theater Company in uh, The Man from Earth. Mm-hmm. And then just started working with Brigham's Playhouse and St. George Musical Theater. And, uh, and when I first started uh, doing the shows... St. George Musical Theater just came back ah. after being dark for five years, yeah. and Brigham's had just come, and so there was still a sense of of uh, competition, I guess is the best word, mm-hmm. where you wanted to be symbiotic, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and then Hurricane was doing their shows, and so what I found was as I went around and I went to a second theater company from Brigham's to do a show at SGMT, one of the Brigham's people said, well, I hopefully you'll come back to the company and do a show again. It's like, well, oh. I, I really didn't see myself leaving the company. Uh-huh. I saw myself going to another company uh-huh. that had a show that was interesting, that mm-hmm. looked fun. And it wasn't, it wasn't ever a matter of doing yeah. that. And so the more I've gone around and done that... Mm-hmm. I, it's, I've seen how the theater companies now are really working hard to work together yes. to share yes. resources, yes. to help each other out. Because I, the patrons that I talk to that go to these shows, they like to go see theater. Yeah. And they talk to me because they've mm-hmm. seen me now in shows. They recognize me. And they tell me what they loved about St. George Musical Theater or Brigham's Playhouse or Kayenta, who is now starting to yes. be out there, uh-huh. or, or Hurricane or wherever. So it's been great. To be able to see those companies come together and the actors now starting to just go where the shows are good. What show interests you and interests me that I want to be a part of and can do that? Well, I think it's been interesting watching in our community how much uh, the theaters have grown over the past few years. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've we've seen, you know, the electric theater start with Stage Door, uh, Brigham's Playhouse and how that has grown over the past years mm-hmm. and SGMT coming back. And that's what I've been noticing is that you can go to all these websites and see these these huge seasons up, you know, and, and I, yeah, the and patrons they, must, you know, want this. Well, in our they community. do. And the great thing is the audiences are getting bigger. Yeah. You, 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 do, you don't want, obviously, to see all these companies and the audiences getting smaller because there's less to go around. Mm-hmm. But fortunately, as I'm watching the audiences and talking to the producers and the directors, executive directors of the companies, their audiences are improving and getting mm-hmm. better. So people want to see the different shows. They want and, to come. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's fantastic. And I think it's very needed right now, too, especially I know a lot of these uh, theaters right now because you work with a lot of the youth. You, right. you directed Annie and you did a uh, School of Rock last year. Was it last year? I believe it was. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It was. And I have four, yeah. got to work with you and Annie yeah. when you played Grace, yeah. which was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, and you asked me as far as time. Um, I'm off on Tuesdays and Friday afternoons and and I was playing softball, and you know I like to golf because if I, I start twitching, if I don't, well, doesn't golf every once doctor a week, golf? I right, I have that to, I have to get on the golf. course. Yeah, but you know it's just a matter of what time and where can I spend it. My kids and my wife gets involved technically sometimes. Yes, and she's, she's done some shows. Yes. So, You've actually acted with both of your daughters most recently with Flowers for Algernon. Yeah, uh, right. And then you work with uh, both of your your younger twins, I think, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Exactly. And mm-hmm. my older daughter Marissa mm-hmm. has she was in Sound of Music. And oh, fantastic! In fact, my whole family was in mm-hmm. that. So we try and do family stuff together as much as we can, and they like watching me in a show. Mm-hmm. I'm taking a break after Beauty and the Beast so we can spend some time together there. But it's really just that balance. Mm-hmm. And especially when I direct a show, I can set the schedule, <laughs> so yeah. the evenings. But, you know, you have to give up something. So I gave up softball as much as I love to play softball mm-hmm. and just have to try and balance, you know, where can that be? Mm-hmm. And, of course, talking to family and saying, hey, you know, what do we need to do there? Mm-hmm. So, um so yeah, so it works out. Uh, works out that you just have to give up that, you know, find the balance where it works. Huh? I, um, well, and I th- and I was mentioning that with with children in this community, seeing that this is needed with our youth. A lot of children don't want to be the triple threat. They don't want to. They're too scared, you know, to do the professional thing. But they want to do something that can help them grow. And their parents are wanting that also. And uh, that's what I've noticed with, around here with the, a lot of the community theaters. They'll provide workshops that help these children decide if this is a future they want to pursue or help them figure out who they are as a human being. You well, know? right, exactly. Yeah. And that's why I love working with the kids because I know how I am to work with. So yeah. I try and make this, uh, especially the rehearsal process, which is by far mm-hmm. longer than the performance process, 
So if they don't enjoy the rehearsal process, the kids aren't going to enjoy shows. Right. So I try and make it, it fun, fun and enjoyable yeah. and connecting and mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So yes. we've got a, a, a guest here. Well, who, yeah, entered it? A, well, who entered, honey? You uh, never know who's going to enter. Yeah, I think someone just entered the building here. It's the beast. <laughs> it is. That's right. Uh, I'd like to, to welcome to the studio, uh, we do have Tyson Smith. Yes, welcome, well, Tyson. Thank you. How are you doing today, Tyson? I'm doing all right. Running fashionably late, as always. Oh, well, an actor. <laughs> You're such an, an artiste. Yeah, an artiste, yes. Actually, well, we, we've been uh, having a wonderful chat with Kelly Olson, mm-hmm. uh, Dr. Kelly Olson, who's directing Beauty and the Beast, and we've got you here playing the Beast. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you know, I do have a question for you, and th- this is what I start with with anybody who hasn't been in the studio before. Who the heck are you, and why are you here in St. George? Yeah, why are you here? Well, that's a loaded question, but uh, I guess I can kind of give you a little background on me. Uh, Grew up in Salt Lake City, uh, went to Skyline High School there, Mm -hmm. and uh, at 15 years old, I actually got into uh, pro wrestling, like tables, ladders, and chairs. Oh, Uh my. (laughs) You know, and, uh, was this in the heyday of WWF? It was. We had... It was the like, late 90s, early 2000s, <laughs> oh, Hogan, right? where it was, you know, The Rock and Stone Cold and uh, Kane, Undertaker, but enough of WWE. I, uh, well, I got to tell you, with, with The Undertaker, that's where I learned theater exactly. with him. Exactly. My gosh, if you want to see real theatricality, you go to one of these wrestling <laughs> events. I will never forget. I'm, I'm going to commandeer the show Uh-oh. for just Uh-oh. one Uh-oh. second. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, I'll tell you, it, it was, I didn't know who The Undertaker was. And I was watching, you know, where, you know, they had all of the, the big name wrestlers at the time. And they were out there saying, I'm going to get you, and I'm going to get you, and I dare him to come into the ring. And, you know, all, all that stuff in the crowd uh-huh. was getting excited. And all of a sudden, this bell and the lights just go rung. Dark. Yeah. And it was and like, it something's going to happen. And atmosphere of like, oh, wait, how did this go from wrestling to like, to like I'm theater. in a gothic like, castle? Yeah. <laughs> I will never forget this guy came out, The Undertaker, and he just stood there while the bell yes. was coming. The audience was getting excited. And I have to say, wouldn't it be cool if we could create that on stage? And then thought, wait a second, that's what we do. Well, exactly. You know, and that's, that's what inspired me at first. That's what I wanted to be was. Uh, pro wrestler, you know my Sweet. my wrestling name was Tyson Ferrari with uh, <laughs> sparkly blue pants and red flames no up way. the side, and did that for three years. Uh, in a year and a half, I was in the hospital seven times with injuries. You know, like I, I'm a pretty built guy. <laughs> Wait but, a minute, it's fake. They really don't get hurt. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, like you know, it's 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 performance stunt work. You know, That's it right. is entertainment. And uh, but what an experience there. You know, and I had the long blonde hair. And so, like, I got into some acting classes because, you know, you're cutting promos in front of an audience and stuff. But it was like, okay, let me, uh, you know, dip my toes in that region. And uh, they would call me back for, you know, the different musicals or plays that the school was putting on. But they always wanted me to cut my hair. And I was like, no, I'm Tyson Ferrari. Like, Ferrari. <laughs> you know, like, so I kept turning down. And I was just chorus, chorus. And then uh, out of all things, my senior year, they did uh, Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing. And they let me have Benedict and keep the hair. And from that kind of snowballed effect, it was, I got contacted actually by, uh, I forget the chair, uh, not chairman, but of the Shakespeare University, uh, Shakespeare Theater. Here at I would University. go there, Shakespeare <laughs> University. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> but uh, so I actually ended up coming down here to SUU in Cedar. Oh, fantastic. And, uh, was uh, that th- Fred Adams that contacted It was Fred you? Adams. Fred. Okay, and yeah, he's we know told, Fred. I mean, when he, when he called, you know, he's like, hi, is this Tyson Smith? And I was, I almost hung up because I thought it was just a recording. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then he's like, how are you? And I was like, oh, uh, I'm fine. And he was like, hey, I've heard about you from about five different sources, and apparently you're kind of good at Shakespeare. We'd like you to come audition. And long story short, I ended up, uh, they offered me a half tuition scholarship, and then I ended up coming down to a Dixie thing where it was UTA, all these hundreds of colleges, and ended up getting a full ride scholarship to Casper College in Wyoming. Fantastic. Mm. And so mm. I was there for four years, and, you know, it was a small pond, but I kind of became a big fish pretty quick there. I uh, landed 15 out of 20 shows in a mm. row, um, and then went to a summer stock in Michigan, came, moved back home after college, and was there for about a year before I ended up just kind of d- jumping out to L.A., and I wanted to, you know, I felt like I'd kind of conquered the stage a little bit, so I kind of wanted to see what the film in- side of it was like, and because I know you got to tone everything down for film versus stage is so much <laughs> bigger, you know, in wrestling, you know, that's one thing that's good for stage is because they do, like, uh, you learn to put your whole body into your character. <laughs> and, you know, mm-hmm. so. Check uh, that out on Facebook, ladies and gentlemen, the acting <laughs> I just did. You know, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. 
Watch out, Tyson. He's trying to take your ride. I know, I know. <laughs> but, uh, you know. I'm I, safe behind the microphone. <laughs> Come on over uh-huh. here. <laughs> Give it, brother. <laughs> no. Uh, but, yeah, after four years out there, you know, I hit. I uh, just saw. Uh, I was on uh, 250 sets, just a blur in the background usually, but there was a couple shows I got my face seen a little bit. and uh, But my personal life kind of hit some walls and. Yeah. It's funny how, you know, the rest of the life kind of tends to follow your energy and what you put out. And so I kind of, uh, as most would say, hit rock bottom for a little bit and kind of went back home to try and regroup. And it's been a few years since I've actually, I kind of gave up on a lot of things and then came back. Uh, we moved, uh, I was in Midway uh, by Park City and Heber. And my mom has a wonderful pianist and, uh, but she's slowly got arthritis creeping up on her. So, you know, coming down to the mm-hmm. warmer climate and stuff. So we kind of new start here. This Halloween actually marks my second year being down here. And, yeah, it kind of was a, a last-minute audition. I kind of remember not feeling prepared, even though, in a way, I'm always prepared. You know, I do. I've got monologues just left yeah. and right in my brain. And so it was kind of like, you know, I remember my parents bringing me, and they're just like, hey, like, they're doing Beauty and the Beast, which I actually played at my college. I was Lumiere the first time. I <laughs> uh, couldn't, couldn't quite hit those money notes yeah. at college. but That's right. You got that Jerry Orbach voice going <laughs> yeah. on, so it's yeah. all right. Yeah. Uh, th- and that's another thing about me. Like, I've played so many characters with so many accents. Most people think I'm from New York. <laughs> and it's, I do. I slip into that, but I also parrot. So if I hang out with you enough, or you are like, I'll just. I was a bartender, and I got for a couple, or yeah, three years in Park City. And totally got in trouble a few times because I just would accidentally start, start mimicking talking about the people yeah. at the bar, and they're like, "You making fun of me?" And it's like, uh, "No, <laughs> sorry, you just have a very unique voice." <laughs> but uh, yeah, just. For, Tyson Smith from Salt Lake City, Utah. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, welcome to St. George. No, it's uh, yeah. been a blast. And welcome to the, the theater community here, the community theater here. Uh, just, you know? Uh, you know, just the thanks to Kelly for uh, you know not knowing a thing about me. And <laughs> I came in, and I couldn't find my resumes anywhere. Like I said, it's been a few years since I would even put my foot in the door. And so I like show up with nothing, and they take a picture of me for a headshot, so at least they had that. And... Uh, <laughs> the things you're writing on, like when it's like your acting experience, I just honestly put a decent amount. <laughs> and yeah, it's a one smiley of those, face. One of those when a he comes face. in, you know. And the <laughs> interesting thing, after hearing his history, you'd expect 15 out of 20 shows with the lead and yeah. all his history yeah. in ensembles. This guy's gonna have all the confidence in the world, and this, this is the first audition in what a couple years, uh-huh. right? So he comes in just like he said, there was nothing there. It's like, okay, who is this? And his audition was great, right? Mm-hmm. But there was still this this hesitancy, this oh, this oh, insecurity yeah. because he was ready to take off. I'm like, wait, um, I want you to do something else. Okay. <laughs> he's, like, back on. he's like, you know, do it this way, or you know, try it with this kind of energy to it. And so I do it again. I'm like, hey, thank you. And my back immediately would start going to the door, like, just thanks for your time. Like, that, and he's like, probably called me back three times to just be like. Like, try it's it again. Okay, now just, yeah, just do it this again. way, you know. Uh-huh. Like, it, you know, the fact that he didn't know anything about me, and he, he did ask, and I gave him just a, a really quick version. But again, you know, I could have been just making stuff up, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, I could have yeah. just been one of those actors that <laughs> fake it till you make it. Yeah, where's your ID? Right. Oh, oh, I I'm, forgot it. I've been <laughs> everything always. Yeah. <laughs> But how grateful I am and the community will be when they see this yeah. show. I told Tyson after this show. He'll the other him, the yeah. other theaters are going to know yeah. who he is and want to work with him because he's got such a wonderful work ethic. Yeah. He's the first one there and the last one to leave, literally. Like Carl Malone, <laughs> right? They always said, oh, the guy's so talented. Well, he was the first one there yeah. and the last one gone every time. And then when you have talent on top of your work ethic, yeah. you know, the world's open. And so, and he's always there helping. And so how grateful we are that this is the show he chose to get back, yeah, into, to get back it. into it. And so mm-hmm. we're all going to have a gift when we watch the performance oh. that we see because it's it's amazing already. So it's well, great. I'm going to tell you, I, I, I'm a little more comfortable calling you Tyson Ferrari than the milkman uh, <laughs> when we get into Carl Malone. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> but I'm glad you know. Maybe you'll own a car dealership. I don't know. In a few years. Someday. Gotcha. But no, uh, you mean the mailman? The mailman. <laughs> okay. uh, well, Carl and I we talk about the oh, milkman okay. okay. together. Yeah. Yeah. He delivers the milk to my okay. my doorstop. <laughs> uh, but let me tell you. You said that you were into Shakespeare and things of that sort, and you talked to Fred Adams. Absolutely. Uh, that's no small feat. That is not. Uh, when it comes down mm. to it. Yeah. And did you audition for the Shakespeare Festival or just for... You, you know, I actually haven't. I've actually not even been qualified to. I've sent in uh, applications before, but I, they just were like, you know, we, we were inter- thank you for your interest, but at this time, you know, we were not accepting auditions. But uh, Shakespeare, you know, so much ado about nothing. It was really, uh, I guess for most people, it is kind of hard to uh, not only just grasp it, but deliver it in a way that is conveyable. A lot of times you get ca- caught in the iambic pentameter and things of it, and it just sounds like poetry the whole time. But if you really, uh, the the actor who really changed that for me was Kenneth Branagh, just in his movie was version, because it, it just something clicked. It just went, you know what? That it, it, I forgot I was listening to Shakespeare watching mm. his performance, and it was like, okay. And you know, me being the parrot I am, you know, some of my favorites are. Uh, like Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Kenneth obviously is up there, and yeah, uh, Ken, even you know, Jim but... Carrey, you know, I mean those guys that just made you got so into it. It's a conveyance, and so you kind of take. I kind of took a little piece of everyone, and you know, and next thing you know, I, any Shakespeare I've done, um, as you like it, uh, and got. Were you to... Charles the wrestler? You got. I, I actually did that. We <laughs> gotcha. and I choreographed. I actually choreographed a few shows, uh, fight scenes, and stuff like that at college. And originally, we actually had a seven-foot-tall guy that was a student there. (laughs) And so I had kind of the Andre the Giant, small lead guy thing. And two weeks before the show opened, he ended up quitting the school, like moved back home and just left. And so they ended up put uh, my uh, chairman, uh, Tom Mempy, who was definitely my mentor there. But he's just kind of like, you know, what could we do? And I've got an Abe Lincoln beard because I'm doing the All the World's a Stage speech. And he's like... You know, and I was like, well, I can re-choreograph this real quick, you know, and having the background I do, but I was like, you just got to get me a mask. And so he totally gets this Lucha Libra, <laughs> like, mask. <laughs> and so, yeah, we got to end up doing both the wrestler and all worlds of stage for that show. That's wonderful. And that's, uh, you know, I, I have to tell you, I knew I liked you when you came in the studio, and I'm going to mm. tell you why that has just been validated for me. Mm. I think I've told this story. I'm not going to tell the whole story uh, again on this show. Uh, but I've done uh, some Shakespeare as well. Just some. And I'll tell you, uh, it was at Virginia Shakespeare Festival when I was in college, and I didn't understand Shakespeare at all. I'll be honest with you. I played roles, and I'm ashamed to admit I was speaking the poetry. A lot of times I didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> and it was that movie, Much Ado About Nothing. I went to the theater and saw it, and I will never forget that revelation of, wait, they're speaking English. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I went home that night and read it, and that that changed my it, whole it, view of it there was something that kenneth really does to, that just it it makes sense it clicks even i mean not that you know emma thompson and some of the, i mean even keanu reeves is in that one i know and Uh-oh. you know some and of he those... says i am a man of few words and we stood up and applauded <laughs> yeah, like, oh, great. But, but you know even even amongst other people like emma that can still portray it very well there was just something kenneth brought like you really just completely forgot you were listening to Shakespeare and Mm. so I went out and I found everything he was in that was Shakespeare from you know Henry V to Richard or anything that he was in and and now now when I read Shakespeare it's actually my most prized book I have from the 1800s is uh, old Shakespeare Ah, with all these plays. I think Michael's and... found a friend here. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Kindred spirit. Exactly. No, and there's no, there's no uh, fun of performance than to make not only Shakespeare make sense to people, but to mm-hmm. just chew yeah. each one of those words in your mouth yes. is quite yes. the delight. Yes. That's, well, that, I'm satisfied. Wow. <laughs> That's the, uh, and this is our beast. This is this the beast. This is the beast. And so that's exciting. I'm, I, uh, I'm very grateful and honored that Kelly kind of well, know nothing about me, gave me just that that chance, you know, because, and, you know, me, I've got my own demons. I, oh, yeah, I'm all, all I'm over the place. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I, uh, you know, I'm trying to overcome smoking as a personal habit, you know, mm. and, you know, we're here in a, and I'm raised, you know, Smith. So my mother was a Smith before she married my father, who's a Smith. So I'm purebred, and I think that that's that's a double whammy, it. yeah. But uh, yeah, 
Oh, lost my train of thought. That happens to me too. It's all right. I, I'm, you know, I'm wondering how are you going to become the beast? I mean, do you? I imagine you have a costumer for the show, and do you have we a do. makeup person for the show also? Because we do. And Tammy so, Hansen's doing that, and Denise and, when. Uh, there we They're go. Better. Okay, that, That's now better. you're on. <laughs> and, um, so we've got some new people helping, but right, we have all the full production team. Oh, wow. And so this is going to be in the round, yes. meaning that you're very close to the audience. Absolutely. So uh, how much detail is going to go into this costume for the Beast? I'm Well, curious. the fun part is uh, we have such a small theater. You know, in Annie, when I did Annie, the girls that auditioned for Annie that I was calling back, one of the requirements for them to come to callbacks was that they would dye their hair red. Mm. Because we're sitting as close as Tyson and I are. Yeah. You're that close to the actors, as you know. Mm -hmm. And so a, a bad wig or any wig on oh, the kids, yes. it doesn't look good. No, it does not. So <laughs> that Breath was, mints are important. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the challenges. So I want to make it as authentic as we can. Uh -huh. So I found some masks that were pretty decent that you'd have to kind of tape and glue and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, so we went a step above, and Craig and Claiborne, who does a lot of the local uh, special oh, yes. effects oh, I think around I've here, seen his stuff, yeah. he came in to rehearsal took a mold of Tyson's face and head. He's making a customized no. latex fitting beast mask that's made for Tyson's face so that it'll fit him well. The jaw will move when he speaks. So I mean, wow. it, there's a little, yeah, not, really not much out. makeup, but it'll be then very it'll be authentic a mask. that'll yeah. fit him very well so that it'll look, it'll, it'll be really cool. It's, oh, it's a wow. unique original one nobody will have ever seen it before well, th there you great. go folks get into community theater and next halloween you're set <laughs> yeah you can kick it with them your three-year anniversary uh, here yeah. <laughs> that's gonna be great and is this a i imagine that they wear microphones when they're on stage in this round right yes mm -hmm. they they will because mm -hmm. uh if you're talking to the one direction the people behind you mm -hmm. obviously wouldn't hear so we'll have mics mm -hmm. uh on all the principal characters and some of the ensemble as many as we can use and so yeah it'll be prepared and and that's the challenge with the mask mm -hmm. we're, we're working that out I now with our imagine. technical yeah. director kyle yeah, myrick <laughs> um is uh to make sure that that mic works how are we going to work we'll right get it all worked out nobody has to worry about you if it you will got work some time. You got some whatever time. we yeah. do yeah but i also want uh, the transformation is a lot of times it's a double there's another actor playing mm -hmm. a prince or something i want it all to be tyson so we're trying to work all that out so he can do oh. it because i mean it's going to be amazing one of the great things about the show is this is a show that everybody has seen mm -hmm. in one form or another right. right it's one of those shows you can say virtually everybody has seen this so part of my vision is how what can i do to this show to make it different so people that have seen it like annie you know mm -hmm. what can i do differently mm -hmm. like when we did the part with grace and annie meeting together mm -hmm. that's not in the mm -hmm. script yeah it's like let's make some moments that people haven't seen before mm -hmm. That the same script is there, but they they can leave saying, "Hey, that was new. That mm -hmm. was that was fresh, and I enjoyed that production because it wasn't the same old Beauty and the Beast." Right. And one great thing is Tyson, being in the show, who's helped choreograph some of the fight scenes and those things, will bring some fantastic things that people have not seen before to the show. Oh, that sounds exciting! Yeah. yeah. It, now I have a question too. You have a uh, you have your choreographer Becky Reed. Mm -hmm. And she's been a choreographer from a bunch of the shows around here. Yeah, she worked at Pineview, I believe, Pineview High School for, oh, oh a couple decades. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but Becky's been really busy uh, because some of the choreographers we've had before, they've had to go other places, New York or whatever, to mm -hmm. look for their dreams, things. But Becky is fantastic. She did Young Frankenstein. She did South Pacific for uh, me. She did Hello, Dolly. She's doing The King and I. Oh, my. She's doing the she's getting around. The Beast. She wow. is. She's, she's busy. And she's fantastic, right? Yeah. That's why she's so busy. And so, yeah, so, I mean, Becky's fantastic, and the choreography is really fun. We've got seven-and-a-half-minute songs in this show. For a wow. choreographer, understand it takes an hour per minute to just Every eight show us. <laughs> right. I mean, it's crazy. It, t Tyson, I have to ask you on something. Did you ever work at Utah Musical Theater? Were you up there at Weber? No. Okay, gotcha. I'm just curious because I, I know I've run into you before. I'm going to be real honest with you. And that's where I started at uh, Utah Musical Theater. The first time I came out here was oh, a <laughs> long time ago. Uh, <laughs> I think that was about 1995. 
uh, yeah. when I was up there in Weaver. And I know I've seen it. Maybe it was that professional wrestling event that I really didn't go to. I was going to say, was it the bar? I don't well, know. 95, <laughs> I was going to say, was he was probably in elementary second school, grade. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to put my finger You're gonna on it. You're going to find out where you. you've seen him before. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that's going to be my goal in the next five minutes. Which, <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, we're always surprised. We do run out of time very yeah, quickly. Yeah, we're starting to run out already. Yeah. Well, this is exciting. When does this show open of Beauty and the Beast exactly? So it opens on November 29th. Okay. And it goes until December 22nd. Perfect. And uh, so we've got almost a month of uh, a run there, which will be fantastic. So Where do people it, go for tickets? It's already in a great place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, um, they go to the Opera House. They can go to uh, showticks4you.com to get tickets. Uh, okay. St. George Musical Theater, right. their website, they can go there, and then it will link them to buy tickets. Uh, the tickets, I believe, are on sale now. They're already selling. Yeah. And, wow. uh, we've already sold out. Uh, December 10th is sold out. So Get your tickets now. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, and Monday. Great for And families. there are three matinees. There were two. I, th- I believe we're adding another ones. matinee because the interest is so yeah, high. Yeah, those little so ones will want to be at this one. Yeah. And get the pictures with the beast afterwards. <laughs> I think that's right. going to be exciting. That's, you know, I think is what's neat about this show today is to show that anybody can come back and do what they love, whether mm-hmm. they're, you know, going to work as a dentist and then they can follow their passion. Just like when we had Glenn Webb on Tuesday, yeah. you know, he works as a teacher all day and then he works out at Tuacon. He does many things in the community. And we and say work, but boy, he plays. He has a good oh, old time yeah, with this. Not working, you're having fun. Yeah, passionate Absolutely. about what they do. And then, and here is Tyson coming back and, you know, just steps into a theater and says, I'm going to audition and get back into it and now he's back into it well it's great it's a place of safety how many other venues or or um, events can Mm -hmm. you have where you have so much of this everything today Mm -hmm. the social media and people and Mm -hmm. and i I know when you go to a playground and if the kids are there or there's teenagers as soon as the adults come by they go somewhere else Mm -hmm. what a great place you have kids of all ages people of all ages that are all working together they're talking i have uh, the oldest member of our cast talking to the youngest member of our cast and everything in between. It becomes a family. Yeah, it's Absolutely. a place where really we all feel comfortable yeah. and we can connect. Well, you connect, you learn You learn from each other. You know, like, uh, you know, for me, and this is just a personal note Kelly may disagree with, you know, a lot of uh, rehearsals are when you're cast in a show, you know. I do believe in that saying that there's no small actors or no small roles only small actors or something Mm -hmm. along those lines um but the part i disagree with in in a sense is coming from college you know any monologue i did or any uh musical number you did with some students you know after you were done everyone raised their hand and you would call on it or the teacher would call and be like here's what's here's what worked here's what didn't worked here's what made me feel Da, da, da. And again, it's all people's opinions too. Mm-hmm. So you, when you're listening to it, you got to learn. Just like in this industry, you got to face rejection. Yeah. You have to face criticism. A little bit. You have to face. Yeah. You have to face that criticism. And because even if you disagree, even if I disagree, something Kelly says, like he's like, oh, I think you should do this. Mm. Like he may bring something to the table that just didn't, you know, hadn't crossed my mind mm-hmm. before, or. Someone may say something, and it may be something that you've actually already thought about, but, you know, you dismissed it. And just mm-hmm. the fact that you're playing off people. I've never been afraid of, you know, I've had a couple actors, a uh, guy who's playing Gaston, Andy Young, just a delight to be on stage with. And he's toured uh, doing, like, uh, dancing competitions and stuff. Yeah. And so he's he's helped make some pretty magical moments with me as well, as well as our fight scenes. And But him and just some other... You know, the younger students, you know, obviously I have a little more experience. So when they come and they're like, you know, oh, like I had one guy ask me if I did voice lessons. And I'm like, no, and <laughs> hadn't even considered it. You know, There's and, another career. There you go. <laughs> then, but then, you know, that and then, you know, another uh, girl in the play, you know, she had some comments and she was so timid about even ask, or saying like, you know, I, I had a note. And she's like, but I don't, you know, want to step on your toes or make you feel bad. And it's like, and I was like, no, no, please. Like, Collaborate. Because mm-hmm. it's okay, yeah. even if even if it's <laughs> something I disagree with. Like, I've always appreciated other people's thoughts because you just take it with a grain of yeah. salt. Because there's no reason for me not to hear how you portrayed my song just now yeah. or how you portrayed this scene right now. Because, yeah. hey, like, 
you may help the next performance or as I sit sit on it for the next week going, huh, that's actually, uh, yeah. that actually flows better now or that actually is more powerful than maybe I envisioned it. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm sorry to say that we are out of time uh, right. for this that's show. So uh, Thank I'll you for you. having us and sorry for my... <laughs> no, no problem at all. Uh, uh, Dr. Kelly Olson, thank you for coming back. This mm-hmm. is your second time here in the studio. Yes, thank you for inviting me again. Yes, and I'm thank sure you, the, Kelly. The amount of work you're doing in the community, I'm mm-hmm. sure we'll be hearing from you again. Uh, oh, thank you. And Tyson, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you in here yes, on the show. Yes, welcome uh, to St. George. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and, you know, we look forward to getting to know you and your work better yeah. and uh, hopefully having you back in the studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else you guys would like to say as a last thought about Beauty and the Beast? Just uh, make sure you come and see the show because there's there's so much heart and depth to the show, some things different than it, it's just not the regular show. There you go. <laughs> <see>. <laughs> <laughs> There's our beast. Yeah, I, I, I can't. And boy, I couldn't balance that one. Let me tell you, it's okay. You're not supposed to. <laughs> I, I didn't know if David Banner was coming out yeah, over there or what. Time. Uh, but anyways, you gotta come uh, and see I'll tell you this when guy. you're older. Seriously. Yeah. But uh, yeah. do check us out yeah. on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 4 p.m. Yes. Uh, we'll be talking to artists, not only theater folks, but uh, musicians mm-hmm. and artists and museum curators. We've got her scheduled, <laughs> Kathy yeah. Cecilwitz, who we had uh, last year, as a matter of fact. She's going to be coming back and telling mm-hmm. us about yeah. the Sears Gallery. Mm-hmm. And uh, just join us at 4 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays, yes. or you can check us out, our archived interviews on Facebook, Radio St. George. And until you hear from us again, please make sure you keep okay. your focus on the arts. Bye-bye.